God bless you. God bless you this this Friday this Friday afternoon. The Lord is good. He, he's not just good, but he's good all the time. All the time, the Lord is good. God is good all the time. During the bad times, during the good times, during the medium times, God is good. Sometimes you have medium days. It'd be a little bad, a little good. I call those medium times. Glory to God. But God is good no matter what. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, that we could praise him. We could glorify him because he's our creator and we love him. Glory to God. God bless you all. For those that's going to come in and watch, there's going to be a few that come in and watch. And we thank God for the few. And then you have few, some that come in. They have um, everybody come in with their own um, intentions. Everybody have their own intentions. Some good, some bad, some indifferent. But make whatever it is, we praise God and we give God glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's the word of God. Let the word of God shine in your heart so that your heart could grow so that your heart could grow and and what comes out of you comes from the heart so if you're growing that's because god is fixing your heart glory to god god loves you god loves you he fixes your heart and then you become a new creature and everything that comes out of you is new because you got a new heart no you're not you're not perfect but you are, but the one that's the one, Jesus is the one that's perfect. And he lives in you and he fixes your heart and he shows you how to move, walk, and talk. Glory to God, all for his glory. Thank you, Jesus. Today, the book of John, 1 John, 1 John, 1 John, 1 John 4 and 7, 7 to the 10th verse, very quick on today. Glory to God. And then we're going to shed some light. It's a lot of darkness in the world and we need light. And if you don't feed yourself light, eventually the darkness will take over. The Bible says, how could two walk except they agree? All right? So even people we sit down with and we talk to, we got to make sure if, 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 that the light is being shared. If too much carnal things are being shared, we know as believers and as men of God and women of God that too much carnal things is deaf. And that's all that's going to be in your mind are deafly things. Because you in that death and deathly things are dark things and dark things, darkness is, has no place in the kingdom of God. So we praise God for the light because he is the light. And if any man loves the light, they're going to chase after it. Because the children of the day, we're children of the day and we chase after the light. The light gives wisdom, knowledge and understanding. To show you who you are. So that you could get to know God. It's important to get to know him. Like you know your boss. Like you know your children. Like you know your husband. Your spouse. Right? You know people. Things you know. know you know your football teams. Your basketball teams. Let's get to know him. The trees know. The birds and animals know. We're the only species that don't quite understand who we are. Some of us are still finding our identity. But you'll find it, you'll find your identity in Christ. Glory to God. He's the second Adam. And we thank God for him. We thank God for the second Adam. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. That wasn't, he wasn't earthly. But the second Adam was heavenly. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And no one was worthy. No one was worthy. No angels in heaven was worthy enough to do it. And not even a man was worthy enough to do it. Ain't that something? The scripture said not even a man. They would say, but wasn't Jesus a man? That's what you see. This is where you, this is where you get lost at. He wasn't just the man. He was fashioned like a man. Which means he looked like a man, but it wasn't a man. It was God. Glory to God, fashioned like a man, flesh and blood, flesh and blood like a man, fashioned, looked like a man, had a skin tone like a man, bled like a man, but there was no sin found in him, no guile ever came out of his mouth, now you, never, you, never, you can't even find a verse where Jesus cracked a joke, glory to God, hallelujah, he was serious, but full of love to save those which are lost. 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. And you don't have to be lost no more. You, you, you have an identity. Your identity is in Christ. You have an identity. You need to know who you are and what you're worth and who you are in Christ. And you'll find out the more you hunger and thirst after him. He that hunger and thirsts after the Lord shall be filled. This is how you get filled. You get filled with the spirit of God by being hungry and thirsty after the word. That's your delight. Your delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, do I what? Meditate day and night. What you going to be like? Like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth what? Much fruit in his season and his leaf shall not wither, but whatsoever he do shall prosper. And the Bible says the ungodly is not so, but like the shaft which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. We should be like trees planted by the rivers of water. The more you feed from Christ and you drink that living water, the more you become like Christ. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The book of the first John, first John four, King James version, of course. As the Lord planted in my heart, that's the book I stay with. Glory to God. Sometimes I switch up, but I like the King James Version. 1 John 4, King James Version, 1 John 4 and 7. It says, Beloved, let us love one another. Look at this, love one another. Shouldn't be no separation. It shouldn't be no division. It shouldn't be no debates. It shouldn't be no arguing. There shouldn't be no jealousy. There shouldn't be no, no strife. There shouldn't be no envy, right? The Bible says, love one another. You're just supposed to be loving one another. Love your brothers and sisters. People say, I don't like him. I don't like her. Well, you're going to hell. Get that I don't like God and start loving them. Glory to God. Sometimes I might say, glory to God, I'm end up going to hell. I'm going to keep it real with you. If I don't get that out of me, I don't like that person. God deliver me. Let me start loving that person. Glory to God. It says, let us love one another. For love is of God. As he did, love is of God. If you love him, it's God. Yeah, that's what love is. Love tells the truth. That's first and foremost. It doesn't lie. It's going to tell the truth. Right? And then love is compassion. Compassionate. Love have mercy. Why does love have mercy? Because God had mercy on you. God had grace and mercy. You should have grace and mercy on other folks just as much as God had grace and mercy on you. God wasn't so quick to expose you for some of the dark things we have done. Glory to God. And I did some dark things. And God hasn't exposed me. So why would I be quick to expose, expose my brothers or sisters in Christ? Why? That's not God. That's a devilish spirit. Yeah, so you see other man of God and woman of God doing that? I'll run away from it. I wouldn't even get involved with that. That's a devilish spirit and we need to pray for it. Pray, pray for him. Glory to God, hallelujah. And at one time I was doing that mess. But God has shown you if you listen. See, God has shown you if you listen, you shouldn't be exposed to nobody. Right? And if you do, go to them directly. If you got something to say or something that you don't dislike, you don't got to let the whole world see it. Glory to God, hallelujah. If they don't receive it, bring another brother with you. Try to correct them then. If that don't work, then, then, then you can bring it to leadership. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bring it to the, bring it to the leader. Hallelujah. Let's, let's, let's try to do it in love. If it's something that's off. Right? But beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. Love is of God. It's not of man. It's not of, it's not of your mama, not of your sister. No one knows how to love if they don't have God. We have a feeling. We have a feeling, but love is of God. True love comes from God. You will never know how to love your wife properly or your children properly or, or people properly if you don't know God. It's impossible. You're going to always have something that's off, that's dark, without God's love living in you so that God can show you. Because for, for love is of God. And everyone that loves, look, is born of God. This is how you know if they're born of God or not. A person that loves. Ain't nowhere in the world a believer should be holding on to grudges. 
Ain't nowhere in the world a believer should be holding on to unforgiveness. I can't forgive him. Then you're not saving. You're on your way to hell. You got to forgive because the Bible says if you don't forgive, the Father which are in heaven is not going to forgive you. That's why someone's, that's why someone's going to get healed, delivered, and set free because we're still holding on to unforgiveness. Yeah, ain't that so? Some things we hold it on to, but we want a prayer. We want a breakthrough. We want a prophetic word. But we don't want to repent. We don't want to say, God, is me. I got that unforgiveness in me. But we want everything else from God except repenting. So what God does when you, when you, when you, when you, when you deliberately like that, that's deliberately prideful or rebellious and don't want to repent or turn from your wicked ways, God will turn you over to a lie. So then you, he'll make you believe in a fake Jesus. A Jesus that say, oh, it's okay, you don't, you don't have to forgive. A fake Jesus that, 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 that works with your feelings. Remember, the gospel is not feelings, it's spiritual. And the gospel, it attacks the feelings. Woo. Good God, oh my. That's one thing about the gospel. It attacks the feelings. The feelings get offended. And when you get offended, you're supposed to repent. Yeah, glory to God. Because that's God speaking to your feelings. It's spiritual because you're spiritual as well. But God is trying to speak to your spirit man. So that you can repent. The goodness of God. Look. Listen, the goodness of God leads man to repent. You hear the goodness by God speaking through a man of God or a woman of God or through peoples of God or even through a little child out of the mouth of babes. Some of y'all are so stubborn, a little baby will come up to you and say, Mommy, Daddy, or Granny, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> That's God. And you should have listened to that little child because out of the mouth of babes, is a pure and perfect praise. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Better start listening. God, speak to anything. God, will let the rocks cry out. God, will use a mule. God, will have the flowers speaking and the wind start clapping and the mountains start skipping. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because he's God. And everyone that loveth is born of God. And guess what it says? And they know God. You know him. Thank you, Jesus. And you're going to know him. This is, this is a thing, too. A lot of people don't know God. They're saying, they saying they, they, they're acting like they know. They're speaking in tongues. They're dancing around. Right? we dancing around. There's one dancing church this generation. Everybody dancing around. Shaking their behind but don't know God. Not even filled with the Spirit. Like it's one big entertainment clown show. But if you love, love God, get to know him. You'll do more than just dancing. Your heart will love. You'll do more than just dancing. Your heart will have mercy and compassion. You'll do more than just dancing and speaking in tongues. You'll be pure with your, with your attitude and pure with your actions. Some of the most meanest people I know are people that speak in tongues and dance around the church. And it says, he that loveth not, knoweth not God. You don't know God if you don't love. You might think you, as I said, he'll turn you over to a lie. God will turn you over to a lie. You believe you loving. That's not love. You're rude. You're disrespectful. You're mean. And your lifestyle proves it. But it says, he that loveth not, knoweth not God. You don't know God. If you not, if you don't even, that's, that, this, this scripture here is wild. It says you don't even know God if you're not loving. This is why we got to try to get to know God. So we See, when you get to know God, God will get to know you and he'll teach you how to love. The reason we don't love is because we don't know God. But if you knew love, you know God. And you would treat people right. But if you treat people wrong, it just shows you don't know God. You're in a worse predicament than them. And it says, in this was manifested the love of God towards us. God loved us. And this is manifesting the love of God towards us. Huh?
What was manifest to pass by? The love of God towards us. You, you, you would have never seen it. He didn't have to do it. He let you see him. It was manifested. Who was manifested? Jesus. And what? In the flesh. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And the word came in flesh and walked amongst us. Fashioned like a man. Because that God sent his only what? Begotten son. Into the world that we might what? Live through him. This is what you're supposed to be living through. Through Christ. A lot of our problems is coming forth because we're living through ourselves. This is my life. I'm going to do what I want to do. You're living through yourself. You depended on you. You're selfish. But it said live through Christ. We can't live through ourselves. Why? Why, Pastor? Why can't we why can't we live through ourselves? Because Satan is the God of this world. <laughs> that's that's the number one reason. That's one of the number one reasons. Satan is the God of this world. And Satan is not playing with you. He's coming to steal, kill, and destroy. And Satan knows the scripture. He knows that the only way is that we might live through him, through Christ. If Satan can get you not to believe that and get you to live on your own, he got you. Because when you're living on your own, that means you don't need God. And when you don't need God, guess who will take your hand? Satan. Satan going to take your hand. Satan going to lead the way. What do you think the scriptures are for? Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, thou comfort me. Look at that. He's with you. You're supposed to know that. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He comes first. He's my shepherd. What do he do? He leads me besides this. He leads, not you. Christ leads us. Not you, brothers and sisters. You can't lead yourself. Christ leads you. You're a tree planted by the rivers of water. You're just a tree. But guess what? You got to be planted by the rivers of water. Your delight is supposed to be in the law of the Lord. You're supposed to know that he's your rock. He's your buckler. He's your shield. Supposed to know that we're supposed to live off of that glory to God, hallelujah! Because God is love, and this was manifested the love of God towards us because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world. Glory to God, hallelujah! That we might live through Him. This is what we live in, we're living through Christ, hallelujah. When I try to listen, listen to me, when I try to live on my own, I fall and I fall bad. I'm talking when I fall, ladies and gentlemen. I fall back. I fall in my mind. I got to get my mind back on Christ. Christ said, son, think on these things. Whatever things are just, whatever things are good, a good report to get my mind back on Christ. That's how tempting the world is now. That's how many distractions and temptations is in the world. And if you follow yourself, you're going to follow yourself right to hell. And God is trying to lead us into everlasting life. And that's the only way is to let God lead us in love. And that's through Christ. And number 10, ladies and gentlemen. Look, number 10, and we closing. Glory to God. This word could save the world. It says, herein is love. Not that we love God. We didn't love God. It's not because, we, not anything that we done. It's nothing I could have done. There's nothing you could have done. Matter of fact, we didn't even love God. We was lost. We was all lost. The Bible says all have sinned. All of us. Ain't no one perfect. We all have sinned. And it says here in his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us. God loved us. And he loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son into the world to save those which are lost. 
Because we was condemned already. And he sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins. He's the sacrifice. Ain't that something? He's the sacrifice. And if God sent his son in the world because he loves us, we ought to love one another. Because how we say we love, how we say we love God and God we have not seen. But we hate our neighbor. We hate our brother. We hate our sisters. We hate our cousins. We hate our co-workers. But we say we know God. It's impossible to know God if you got hatred in you. Dear brothers and sisters, today is a good day to say, Lord, it's me. Lord, some of this stuff that's in me, it got to come out because it's no good. The way I think is no good. Some of the stuff I say is no good. And what's coming out of me is hatred. God, I need your love and I need it today. You might say, why today, Pastor Bias? Because today is the day that the Lord has made. And also today is the day of salvation. Now is the acceptable time. It's the acceptable time to receive Christ every time you hear the word of God. It's acceptable time. I love you all. I pray and hope that the Lord bless you. I pray and hope that this word touch you. And I pray and hope that the Lord lead us and continue to guide us all during these evil and wicked days. God bless you all. I love you. Have a wonderful day.